Rodrigo Muniz, he's done it again. Oh, what a lovely goal. But I'm delighted for Sasha Lukic. It's his first goal for the club and he'll love that. The Hammersmith Enders are on their feet. It's Muniz again. Oliver, 3-0 ahead. Hello and welcome to the That's So Craven podcast, your Fulham podcast from Down Under. Here today with Lean Stocks, just uh, Skibby and myself. How are you, Skibby? Yeah, I'm all good. Um, <laughs> you know, we've we, we've drawn the short straw. Clearly, nobody wanted to talk about this game. Um, but unfortunately, Very, it's down incredibly, to us. Incredibly, <laughs> incredibly creative excuses. They all came up with our side project. Uh, I've got to complete leaving leaving town i think dave left the country for <laughs> six six hours or so and i mean uh, i feel bad yeah. for him if i if i was in uh if i was at the stadium yesterday i don't think i'd want to resurface <laughs> for a long time so um I, I the benefit of the oh. doubt goes to dave but the other boys you let everyone down so <laughs> yeah totally totally well let let's talk about um we're here oh. we're obviously here to talk about the uh the London derby, the forgettable London derby uh, that was yesterday against Brentford, a nil-nil affair, um, which regrettably didn't need to be so. Uh, there, there were some opportunities. There really were some opportunities. And uh, it, it feels like we, we we should have come away with more than the point we did. Um, yeah. I, I honestly expected this to be a much more combative, really competitive game, but it kind of it didn't, didn't feel, feel like, like it, it, did it was not not at all not at all and so it was kind of i was a bit confused in the end because i i if if i think back to the 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 first time we we met these guys you know we did we didn't come away with anything at all but it was a pretty intense game and this game just didn't have it at all what are you thinking skibby uh you know and i'm not going to interview you on this this conversation <laughs> no, 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 we're, just, a... we're just we're going to chat we're going to chat we're... But chat, what, yeah. what are you thinking? Where, where, where did this all go wrong? Ah, oh, the boys are on the beach. I know we, we we touched upon it. I mean, if there was one thing that gave me the impression that the boys didn't really want to know was Willian. Like oh. I have never seen him give the ball away. I think was it six times in the first half alone. Just where he did the the right thing, which was what he normally did, which was get the ball down you know, go to take on his man, cut back, bring others into play. And he would get to the point of bringing others into play and it would just go straight to a Brentford player. And you're just thinking, I mean, that is was, so wasteful. Was, uh, but it was um, just so uncharacteristic. It was weird. Very much. I mean, it was so far off his best. It was not funny. And if he did that once in a game uh, for a guy who's such a skillful passer, Mm. And with, with, with such good vision, he uh, the, these these passes were not just a bit off; they were wildly off, like really wildly off. off. It was yeah. very very difficult. Uh, you know, it it almost felt like, um, like he was recovering from a flu and had a fuzzy head. It was just like he wasn't there. No, absolutely. Um, really and surprising. when he's not, and as we've seen this season, when Willian isn't on it. There's very few that can step up and and sort mm. of be that um, be that creative spark for us, and I think that's potentially where we struggled. But I mean, look, Brentford weren't good. I think that that's 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 one of the main sort of takeaways from this game. But we were just as equally bad. I think. Um, I mean, there was there was glimmer, there was like glimmers of hope. I think it would be Pereira had played some sort of nice work on the right hand side, you know, and and um and it Iwobi had a few shots, but there was a few elements where you could clearly see that Iwobi was not on his game, not for, not really full of confidence. He, his shooting was, you know, straight at the goalkeeper. I don't know whether it mm. was just against his game where he was sort of getting the opportunity to cut inside quite a lot. Um and then he'd have to shoot with his weak foot. But um which just looked terrible, yeah. but there was, I mean, everyone for me, I think we, we played our strongest 11, which was very clear. Um, Lukic in the middle, he was very far up pitch, which I liked. I this, Finally, we were sort of seeing a position where, uh, where Lukic could take a, a sort of a stronghold on the game, which was like a, you almost kind of had a diagonal three 
in the centre midfield, you kind of had Pereira, Lukic, and then Polina. And Lukic that far up the pitch is a lot more, has a lot more impact on the game for me. And he was sort of picking out some passes. He got into the box at one point. I was like, bloody hell, we've got a centre mid in the mm. box for once. Um, mm. And I thought, you know, the we're sluggish start, but we could grow into the game. And we started to grow into the game, but we just really lacked that real intensity which like you say you didn't get from a, a a west london derby especially as apparently as rivalries go this one is quite a, a strong rivalry between fulham and brentford but i didn't see that i just saw a couple of teams who didn't have anything to play for it was almost like i think the the pre-season friendly we had in america against brentford was more intense than this game um mm. but i think mm. And there is a key thing that a lot of people talk about, which is the, you know, we build up from the back, toast in with his, you know, um, high risk sort of passes and build up from the right hand side. And potentially you don't get that with Diop. I think he, I thought he was fantastic defensively, but yeah. going forward and, and trying to get the ball out and, and playing the way that we play, um, we kind of lack that with Diop. And I, you know what? I don't blame Diop in the slightest. I think you just can't. Um, expect to come back in after you know having such a long time out and then going into a game and expect it to be 100%. He's going to grow into that position. Whether we have the patience to allow him to, that's another story. But I thought defensively, Bassi uh, and Diop were fantastic. Um, Absolutely. But they were just put under so much pressure just from the really crap passing in front of them. Um, and I think there was one where Willian gave it away and Mbwemo was in. Oh. Bassi got back and deflected it onto the bar. Like, so fantastic bad. block. Um, mm. But Jesus. I thought that yeah, was, was in, actually. I actually so thought that I. was in. Yeah. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was the smallest of deflections, but geez. Um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to talk about that, actually, I mean, too, you know, in, in all of this sort of dreariness. I, I thought Bassi and, um, and Diop actually had a pretty good game. And as, as you say, there are elements of, of Diop's game which we would – I was going to say rather he didn't have, but we, we, we wish he had certain elements, which he just doesn't. But as, as a defender yesterday, I thought he did really, really well. And, you know, ask yourself how often and how much of a threat was, uh, was Tony yesterday, it barely at all. Mm. So he, he, did, he did a good job. I think both of them did a good job on – on, on yeah. Tony. I loved the um, fact that sort of Diop would just like Ivan Tony barely had a chance to sort of turn. I think Diop was really kind of took a leaf out of Bassi's book, just really aggressive on the first touch, trying to intercept. And I think there was a moment where um Diop sort of got in front of Tony, carried the ball forward, and I think he, he even lost it on the edge of Brentford's area, mm. um, but then managed to win it back and play it off to Pereira. Mm. And I thought that it's kind of like the high risk, high reward um, defending that, that that Marco likes, and I thought that was a really good um, sort of moment of play. And uh, Tony, if you're going for, I mean, I was going to touch on this later on, but I mean, seeing as we've mentioned him, you know, he's been singing, "I want to be champion, playing the Champions League. I want to play for Arsenal. I want to do this. I want to do that." And I, he hasn't scored in ten Premier League games. I didn't see anything yesterday that shows me that he's going to go to that level. I mean, has he somehow managed to put his foot in it? <laughs> I mean, I, if I was Arsenal or one of the top four sides, would I really be in for a striker who's, you know, zero for 10 in the Premier League at the moment um, and not, not think, scoring? I, th um, I don't think you're getting away with that. You can't, you can't be considered to be a top striker, even in the worst side. Uh, yeah. uh, the very best of them just, don't stop scoring goals. They find a way. And, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think... Well, quite, yeah. quite funny if he comes with his tail between his legs and says, oh, yeah, all that stuff I said before, I was joking, so I'm going to stay. But... <laughs> do you, do, do you, can you actually imagine that? I can I can never imagine the guy even even feigning sort of humility. God, I just can't see it <laughs> myself. But... Uh, yeah, well, let, let's talk about the let's talk about the bright spots. Um, I, as you said, I, I, I think Pereira, actually, Pereira and Rewobi were trying. Um, uh, there are a lot of things just not coming off. We we just couldn't yeah. string passes together, 
and it's you know you're never going to get anywhere if if that's uh, how it's going for you. I, mm. I thought Mooney's tried. I thought Mooney's actually did a few pretty good things. Actually, um, again, some of his layoffs, some of his passes were really, really quite quite beautiful. Um, and I, I don't want to jump forward quite that far yet, but I'm mm. struggling to think of anything that that's really exciting to talk about. But yeah, he was very unlucky for me to be taken off, and it almost felt like yeah. um, Marco felt he wanted to try something, needed to do something to win the game. But it, it did feel like let's talk about the, that in a minute. But geez, it did feel like he picked the wrong guy there because I, mm. I, I don't. I was I was trying to work out whether when once I realised that he was going to be substituted and it took a little while before they actually made the change. I was trying to work out whether he was injured or not or whether he was cooked and it mm. didn't look like either. So it just looked like a tactical change that was made. But, um, yeah. Anyway, um, what, what can we talk about in that first half of that, that that's even remotely promising or exciting? I mean, we, I think I we do remember he might be, he won't be um, had, I think he had two shots on goal and one of them was absolutely straight to the keeper. Yeah. Um, how many other shots do we have that I can't even remember, to be honest? Um, I think Pereira had a couple of his little pot shots over the bar. Um, I think a really loose header from Muniz with not much power on it. Um, yeah, but I think it was, yeah, yeah. It was kind of more what we've seen before, which is, you know, if the delivery into Muniz isn't great, then there's not much else we can do. Um, and I think we just struggled to get that final ball. I think, you know what, I'll give um, some credit to Brentford that I thought that they defended the crosses quite well. I thought there was elements not being too mean to Muniz, but I think there were elements where he could have perhaps got across his man a bit better, um, which we've seen in the past. But I think if you're feeding off scraps and, and you're really not knowing, because I think a lot of the crosses for me were coming, like Willian wasn't on it, let's be honest. Um, and I think a lot of the crosses for me were coming from um, Iwobi and they're not the best, if I'm honest. They're just one of those kind of hit and hope, get it in the mixer. And, and I think he doesn't find... A, a real pinpoint cross to find where Muniz is. I think Muniz has got to do a lot of anticipation of where this ball is going to go, um, which I think was really kind of summing up our attacking play and our lack of threat, as it were, in the third, in the um, in the final third. But it was just very scrappy, no real um, sort of intent and and sort of um, putting our foot on the ball to actually say, right, this is going where Mooney's is. And I know where he's going to be. We were kind of missing that kind of telepathy that we've seen in the past. Mm. Let's uh, um, pick up on something uh, that Steve Reynolds uh, following along on the live stream has commented on. He said, uh, uh, Andreas is often too selfish and rather than pass the ball, he shoots. What, what, do, you, what do you think about that? I mean, I, I don't mind my number 10 getting in and having a shot, even if it's – because, he, he, you know, he's got a shot on him. He's definitely got a shot mm. on him. Um, what, what do you think about that comment? I think it's quite harsh, if I'm honest. I think Andreas – you listen to that, Steve? <laughs> You're quite harsh there, Steve. I think I think he – like, yesterday, he, he was passing on more often than not, I think. Um like I think the one two with Iwobi comes to mind. There was a moment where he um I think he picked the ball up from Diop, as I mentioned, and he got the ball out of his feet, but he instead looked for for Willian um and Robinson out wide. But I think yeah, his shooting hasn't been fantastic from long range. Um, but I think I don't mind him having the shots. But I think for 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 us that Andreas is probably one of those I mean, the, the, the key passes that speak for themselves. So he's created the most chances for Fulham. Um, I think outside or created the most chances for Fulham is one thing, but creating the most chances outside the top six um, is is another. And I think it shows that he is bringing those people into play, but they're probably not 
the most um, prolific of goal scorers and seem to sort of lose that. But I think he, for me, he does enough. Um, but the distance shooting looks worse than it actually is. I don't mind him having a pot shot for for um, one or twice or once or twice in a game. I think I'd be more concerned if he wasn't shooting. Uh, mm. And I think that's what we're seeing with the Wobi is <laughs> if you're not taking that shot, um, which I guess he did, in the, but they were both quite low confidence shots. Like he didn't try to go across the goalkeeper. He just sort of tried to put something on it and, and, and get it towards goal. Whereas I think Pereira, at least he's sort of trying the more showing the confidence of trying to sort of curl something into the top. And he's looking for those corners. He's not just getting it towards goal and see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. I, look, I, th I think, um, I, I think there might be something in that. I, I feel your frustration, Steve, but I think on a day when there were an awful lot of players had very, very ordinary games, you're possibly being a bit harsh there mm -hmm. because I, I, I don't think he had his, had the worst game out of the 11 by, by a long shot. Uh, mm. but fight me if you fight me, if you will, if you will. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I actually thought William was fortunate to actually come out after half time. It was that bad. Yeah, uh, it was, it and was I probably know the worst I've seen. Actually, I'd say it was the worst performance of any Fulham player this season. I'd play, I'd put it that way. It, it 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 was just so off that it, there must be something behind it. it you know, it's mm. just uh, he looked he looked like his age, and he looked like the kind of greatest fear that a lot of people probably have about him still being in the squad. That maybe he's just beyond it, mate. He just looked so so bad. Uh, but uh, but he was also very frustrated. He he kind of had his hands, head in his hands a few times. He I, I don't think he could quite believe what was coming off his boot. Um, mm. And and they weren't just like missed passes. They were into dangerous areas as well, which kind of s suggests that it wasn't just uh, poor execution, but just not thinking straight. Mm. Uh, strange, strange. Um, I think it's 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 strange to sort of think about if if I go back to, you know, the time where Willian was like one of our best players on the pitch and, you know, Anthony Robinson was getting linked to top four teams because of his unbelievable athleticism. Like that goes back to me to Tottenham at home, which was a long time ago. And since then, we've just not had any... Um, well, we're not, I haven't seen the same sort of intensity from those sort of players who are our game and our match winners. It's almost mm. as if they've all just kind of, you know, taken the, the, the foot off the pedal and, and just not really just coasting now. Mm. Oh, no, don't, don't uh, mute your dog, Skibby. We need some intelligent uh, co commentary here. <laughs> I'm the. Uh... Yeah, he's he's arguing. He's a massive uh, Anthony Robinson fan, so he's not happy that uh, <laughs> I'm slating him. So, <laughs> uh, I thought I thought uh, Robinson had some some moments, uh, some pretty decent moments yesterday. Actually, there was one he moment. Um, go on. No, I was going to say. I mean, you're you're more than welcome to say the moments, but I think it's just we saw elements of where he can fly down the wing, pick out the across. Spurs comes to mind, but. I just didn't see the same level of intensity and the same sort of aggressive ag aggression, I guess, is uh, uh, probably the key. Um, the key that I, I love about Anthony Robinson's game. Um, but um, but to sort of try and keep him Buemo quiet is a, is a real task on its own. Um, so I sure. guess I give him some credit there. But um, no, go ahead. Uh, the moment you were talking. No, no. Um, actually, actually, the best moment of all, which which is a, a fast forward. I feel like we almost need to get to the subs because that's kind of when things started to happen for us. Um, and uh, yeah, let's jump forward. Um, 64th minute. Um, looking at my notes here. Um, Jimenez is, uh, replaces Bunez, which... Uh, I, I get I get Marco trying to just do something to have an impact on the game, but I, I, I thought it was a really terrible, terrible decision to take him off. Um, and, and, and certainly Jimenez will come to that in a minute. But whilst, 
yeah, sure, he probably deserves a run. What a terrible decision to bring him on. He had a, a pretty terrible 15 or 20 minutes, didn't he? And and then uh, Traore comes on for Willian, which uh, was actually a pretty good move. And for once, Traore was actually given a reasonable amount of time. And mm. I think um, I think he's probably proved that he deserves even more time. And he's probably been a bit bit hard done by. Um, and I'll just jump forward here. Um, 75th minute, uh, Tom Kearney replaces Sasa Lukic. And Bobby Decadova reed replaces Pereira. And then obviously at the 90th minute, uh, Harry Wilson comes on for Iwobi. But can we can we just go back and talk about um, uh, Jimenez? What's going on? What is going on? I think he was just giving him some minutes towards the end of the season. I think that's that's all it was. I mean, for me, if we're going to give a striker a run out, then Broya is the obvious choice. A similar level of athleticism, level of pace. I think there was times in the first half where Fulham broke with the ball, whether it be Pereira, it will be bearing down on goal. And really strange, like Muniz just made the wrong runs for me, not to really slate it, but I think there was elements where, you know, he could start pulling defenders left and right and, you know, start creating those channels to for Iwobi and Pereira to keep running into. But he just seemed to stay central and didn't really know where to go. And I thought that was a bit of a um, mm. an interesting moment. But um, And then part of me was thinking, you know, Broya in those situations, potentially a more experienced, especially in the Premier League, could, you know, make those more intelligent runs and, and start finding that space. But Jimenez, for me, isn't that player to run in behind. So it, it didn't really make sense that he would have been the, the, the right choice to bring on. Um, but, you know, I think for me, it was just Marco wanting to get minutes in the legs just because it's coming to the end of the season. They're not playing for anything at the moment. And that's just how it is, I think. Um, but um, I mean, it wasn't the best. I, I, I give Muniz the benefit of the doubt. I think, he didn't really get the service, but I also don't think it was his best game for us. Um, mm. I think there were elements where I just thought, oh, that could have been a bit better or, or you know, that he can learn to, to sort of make more intelligent runs. But I think that will come in time. Um, mm. But yeah, yeah it would have been my choice. <laughs> uh, and to be fair, the, the, the commentator who really annoys me uh, on, on the stream we normally get. Tony Gale. Uh, Oh, Tony Gale. I really do not enjoy listening Former to Former Fulham him. captain, though. Show some Former respect. Ca- uh, <laughs> look, I don't enjoy his commentary, and he's actually not that favourable towards it. He's actually quite harsh towards Fulham. Yeah, he is. Uh, I, I, I know he tries to be, yeah, I guess he's trying to be fair and impartial, but it just makes annoying comments, uh, sort of patronising annoying comments. But um, – uh, one one comment that I think you you kind of may be referring to is uh, a salient comment that he did make was um, somewhat criticizing, constructively criticizing Munez for his rawness and his mm. naivety in 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 some of the runs he makes. Not so much running into space, but actually drawing players away and creating mm. space for others behind him. Because uh, there was a, a one one time, it, particularly I remember when I think Pereira was behind him, and if he'd made a run, it, it would have given Pereira quite a lot of room. And yeah, I mean, um, like you say, I, I think probably just wasn't his best game. And again, I, I, I think it would be unfair for us to overly yeah. focus on Mooney's because he, he certainly wasn't the worst out there. No, but give him a preseason and a you know a structured squad that we know that we're going to go forward with then I think those things come. I think the fact that we've sort of thrown him into um, sort of the season and, and expected things to work, and it just has. Um, there's not a lot you can do week by week because, you know, you, when you're you're more focused on the, the the sort of the game at hand rather than sort of the, the ideology that you want to play and the philosophy. Mm. So I think give him a full preseason as our number nine and, you know, how we're going to be sort of breaking forward, I think we'll start to see better results, if I'm honest. Um, mm. But, I mean, you talk about the commentary, you got to love the, the fact that they thought they were at Craven Cottage for about yeah, no. 
about three or four times, I think. I saw. Um, but uh, well, how, hey. how did Gale not bring br- br- come back from that? Oh, you'd think you'd know better. Anyway. No. I guess um, they were just wishing and hoping that they weren't at the G-Tech, I suppose. Uh, wh- one thing that uh, Steve Reynolds, once again, has actually uh, put a note out here, and I was going to mention it, because to me that was actually a, a highly enjoyable part moment in the game where Brentford broke down the middle of the pitch and it looked like we were in serious trouble. And I can't remember who actually was on the ball. Um, it wasn't in Buemo, was it? I can't remember. I think it was moment. either him or Visser. Um, yeah. It, it, yeah, I can't remember. Pacey Winger, uh, let's put it that way. Yeah, I, and he had a couple of yards. He had a couple of yards spare. But he actually, for his, uh, unfortunately, had Robinson and Adama <laughs> behind him. And it was absolutely brilliant to watch them reel him, reel the guy in and actually nick the ball off him, which, yeah. pff, you know, when, when, when are you ever going to actually get two guys that quick behind you for that to happen? It was very, very entertaining. Um, <laughs> again, I, I have to say that um, I thought, I thought Adama looked pretty good, actually. He looked good. He, he looked very, very up for it. He was very combative. He used his body beautifully. Still don't think we put enough balls in behind to let him run onto it. We still don't seem to play to that cheat that he has. And, um, yeah, go on. But we do when he's not on the pitch. <laughs> oh, come That's, on. It baffles me, right? Because <laughs> we even saw we saw another one yesterday, which was, you know, the Moonies get the ball out of his feet, turn, swivel, and, and a ping over the yep. top for Iwobi. Imagine doing that to Adama. You'd be... Oh. I mean, no, no attacker would be able to keep up with him for the, for the cross, so he'd have to do it all himself. But I mean, yeah, you just don't seem to see that um, sort of style of play when Adama's on the pitch. I don't know why it is, but um, no. But I, I, I can I can sense where we're going. We're we're slowly edging towards a fantastic Adama cross, aren't we? But to to be fair to the guy, I mean, there are a couple of moments where. He, he he's got he's he's got a strong boot on him, both left yeah. and right foot. And I never realised he had such a good left foot actually, till a few weeks ago when he unleashed one, which was you know it was, had had some force behind it. And I don't mind that. I don't mind some of those crosses. He he really smashes them in into the yeah. six yard box. Now it doesn't always get them into the right area, but it's got a lot more, more sort of. It's a lot more potent than those balls that we often get in from Iwobi or, you know, yeah, other players. So for me, he has kind of fought against these very, very few minutes that he's got. I don't know that he's made a massive case, you know, to start against other players that we have. But he... You know, giving him five minutes is a joke, and it's actually, it's it's really unfair on the guy to actually expect him to come on and turn the game around and score a goal or create something remarkable in five minutes. It's just a difficult, difficult thing to do. And you know, I I kind of, I kind of feel like we're we're, we're willing the club to invest in even higher class wingers, which I suppose puts a Dharma a bit further down the pecking order if that were to happen. But in in the event that our wingers aren't really doing the business, you wonder why he's not being given an opportunity to start. I, I genuinely think he's earned it, you know, because every time he's come on, the last three or four times he's come on, he he's done nothing, nothing wrong and, and everything to actually enhance his reputation. That's an awkward moment. I think I've lost Skibby. Skibby, are you there from outer space? That, that, I think I've lost him. Well, here we go. It's just me. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Tom Kearney for Sasa Lukic. I thought, um, I don't think, I, th- I don't think, uh, Lukic was having the worst game. And as uh, Skibby mentioned, he, he did do some, uh, interesting things and find himself in the right areas of the pitch um, earlier on in the game. But 
Um, I, I, I guess it was at the point of proceedings where Tom Kearney, we may as well have given him a go. It was all a bit late for Tom. I don't. He didn't have that much of an influence on the game. I mean, he only had uh, fifteen, yeah, fifteen or so minutes. But I, I didn't think he was terrible. I uh, didn't think he was amazing. Um, Bobby Decker, Dover Reed, again, uh, d- I don't think Bobby really had much influence on the game at all. Um, I, I guess Pereira was taken off mainly because he'd pretty much done all he could have possibly done in the game. Um, that's okay, Skippy. I'll, I, was that some sort of joke exit there, you know, just to leave me on my own? It was quite quite interesting, actually. Do you know what? I just wanted to leave you in a monologue about Adama because uh, just you're in your element, so... <laughs> I thought. <laughs> Look, this is I wouldn't say that Darbo is my favorite player, but I've I've kind of grown to feeling that he mm. deserves a, a better run. W- Williams the name on my back. Um yeah. but uh uh yeah. Uh, no. I I I'm just talking about the other substitutions um you know Lukic Lukic or t- uh, Tom Kenny for Lukic, which I thought was mm, yeah. meh. Um, yeah, it wasn't Tom- fantastic, but he didn't do anything wrong, but it, it no. just was, in, was ineffective. Uh, and BDR for Pereira again, uh, didn't 100th, do anything was wrong. Was it his hundredth but... Premier League appearance for BDR? I think as well. So, well done, Bobby. That's yeah, no. a lot more yeah. than I expected, if I'm honest, <laughs> in the nicest possible way. But no, I think going back to the sort of Adama stuff, I think could he be someone that we could utilize against man city like leave somebody really pacey up because man city are going to flood everybody forward long ball out you've got an out ball to adama that's probably something that i'd rather have than it will be if i'm honest um and that could be something I mean, I mean, that could why damage not? if you really wanted it I mean, yeah, why go not? For it. it would be so disruptive they probably mm. wouldn't be thinking that we're going to do that. They probably think, "Oh no, Fulham are going to put their best eleven out and you know be re- very respectful." You know, fuck it, just just put, pull something crazy like that mm. and just totally disrupt them and make them think. And you're probably going to buy yourself ten minutes into the game yeah. where we'd be under so much pressure, but it'd just be a bit chaotic. And uh, I, I don't care who you are, you're gonna you're gonna struggle. You're going, to be, you're going to be looking over your shoulder for Dharma's, you know, anywhere near you. And yeah. he's the kind of player who's who he can embarrass the very best purely because you can't catch him if he gets past mm. you. Yeah. And he's, you know, obviously, I don't often see him use his strength. It's normally his speed that you're sort of looking to. Mm. But clearly he's a big boy and he's very strong. And I loved him brushing aside whoever that was that he, he brushed aside yesterday. Do you remember it might that? have been Pinnock. Was it Pinnock? I think uh it... well he Pinnock well, was on that side, but I, I don't recall it being Pinnock. It might have been. But he brushed for, him aside and he got his cross. Is that yes, yes. Yeah, I suppose yeah. we'll have to talk about that, won't we? Come on then, let's do it. <laughs> Tell me about it. Walk walk me through it. Walk walk me through how you with a blindfold and a paper bag over your head could have done better. Exactly. I would I would have preferred Leno in that situation, I think. It was just everything about it was just get it on target, take a touch, take your time. Is is that a man who loves loves to grandstand? Is it a man who is just so desperate to score because he's got such a he's had such an awful season and well, four of them actually. Um, mm. is or or is that just an absolute brain fail? He expects so much more from him well, because he's an experienced striker. Even if you're not actually at your top, you'd expect composure. I wouldn't say awful season. I think that would be a little harsh. I mean, he did go through a, a spell where it was quite prolific. I think the Arsenal goal was great. Um, the goals against Nottingham Forest, like if I'm honest. That's one of my goals of the season is that, you know, the, the chest down, Ola Ina, see you later, floors him, round the keeper, back heel. Oh, that was mm. fantastic. Um, mm. And I think the injury just came at a wrong time. And I think that's probably a fair assessment of his season that 
injury came at the wrong time. Mooney stepped up. Now he can get back in the side. And that's such unfortunate. But there are things where I see people talk about, you know, oh, he's sort of low on confidence or, you know, not, not necessarily match fit. But I see the opposite. It was a very casual. He thought he'd scored in my eyes. The way that he stepped up to take that first time as well showed me a confident striker who was just too casual with it. Didn't didn't make sure that he got it away. And I think that was probably more, you know, harmful than actually having a low confident or a, a striker low on confidence. Um, because I think Mooney's buries that, Pereira buries that. I think there is a lot of players in midfield who would at least get it on target, but to take it first time over the bar, just and it summed up the day for me. It just really did a, a casual, no one really cares kind of shot to sum up a no one really cares kind of game. Um, and, you make a good yeah. point there, though, Skimmy. You make a good point because someone who who was very low on confidence might have trapped that had three touch. touches which 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 he had time to do and and then kind of hit it straight at the keeper because he didn't have the confidence to put it in a corner right but he's yeah. gone first 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 time on his left foot which I don't think is that good um hence the so many rabonas but um you know, maybe you're absolutely right that there was a kind of hubris, extreme confidence there that he actually saw an open goal, hit it first time and thought, this is an absolute winner. Yeah. yeah. And then and it, and of... it would have been the winner. I didn't see enough from Brentford to, to worry me. Yeah. And I think that's just the, the takeaway is we should have won that game from that chance but we didn't. And that's just down to the casualness of Jimenez. Mm. Um, and I mean, just sort of shows why, you know, he doesn't do, it's just his worth it, work ethic, I think just doesn't sit right with me as well. Maybe we've been spoiled with the work ethic of Mitrovic and Mooney's in recent times, but he just swans about and, Tries to get the odd flick. The amount of times he tried a bloody back heel. Um, I can't remember what game it was, but it was before he started scoring. But I was sitting there in the Putney end just watching him try these back heels, which were to no one. And you're like, just take a touch. Do the simple stuff. And it's like when, depending on whether you sort of watch sort of like youth football, but it's like watching a kid trying to do all the stuff he's watched on Match of the Day that the previous night or whatever. And you're like, just do the simple stuff. Stop doing all mm. these flicks and tricks and stupid crap because it doesn't work. And then he'll one will work, and then he just carries on doing it. And you're just getting I, that's one of my frustrations with him. And is is that he, mm. he he's a no, he's a flair player, but he he's not a flair player. He thinks he's a flair player, and there are mm. some elements that come off. But I mean, nine times out of ten, it doesn't work, and it's frustrating to watch. And he doesn't really bring much to the team. Um, and then, yeah, that was the icing on the cake, was just blazing it over the bar in, in a game which uh, the fans would have loved to get one over on Brentford, of course. Uh, I think my, my feeling is that uh, his, his, his wage, uh, alleged wage, has always bothered me at 100K. If that's mm. actually what we're paying him, Wow. I get I get the context that at the time when we signed him, you know, we just lost Mitrovic. We we needed someone and um, steady the ship type deal. Yeah, they, they took a they took a chance on him. But it it in hindsight it seems very poor value. I know we didn't pay a lot of money for him, was it four or five million, million pounds, yeah. I think. But but even, but but the, the overhang of a hundred thousand a week, if that's what the number is. Seems nuts now, uh, in 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 the context of what we've got, and I just wonder, as the the, the deck has been shuffled by Mooney's appearance or resurgence, however you want to think about it, whether we can really tolerate that going forward, 
you know, I just, you know, as Steve Reynolds actually puts another uh, question out to us here. It sounds like we've only got Steve Reynolds on on, on the, the, the line here, but uh, Steve is coming up with a couple of beauties today. Um, with Birmingham being relegated, if they asked Stansfield for other, if they asked to extend Stansfield on loan for another season, should we say yes or no? He's got to come back, doesn't he? I mean, time has cometh anywhere but Birmingham because mm. that club is a mess. And I'm, I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm glad they went down because the way that they treated uh, John Eustace, they were sitting sixth in the league. Then all, then they did this whole circus with um, uh, Tom Brady coming in, you know, as a director, blah, blah, blah. They were sitting sixth in the championship, overachieving. Stansfield was playing really well. And then they brought in Wayne Rooney and plummeted. And Wayne Rooney didn't like or didn't play Stansfield very much. Um, and then he got sacked and, you know, and it was too late. And the damage was done. And I think that that club has shown the values that they hold is not somewhere that we want a developing player to be. But honestly, I would love... Stansfield to come back for pre-season, um, go through the assessment and see if he can be our number two, number three striker. Um, number three striker probably wouldn't benefit him much because I think you need minutes. If we can't give him minutes, then he needs to get minutes elsewhere. And for me, what I would really love to see is he got an opportunity to go to Ipswich in January, which I don't think, I'm not sure why it didn't, come off but maybe he stayed because Wayne Rooney got sacked so he stuck around in Birmingham but I think if Ipswich come back in for him to be their striker in the Premier League oh yeah 100% I think yeah. that would be probably the best opportunity for him in a team who has a very very good manager in McKenna um, they probably have low expectations um, they know they're going to be in a tough season but if you can get that Premier League experience of playing 38 games in a season, then I'm all for it. And I think that's probably where I can see Stansfield going. Um, I think they, they there's a player that obviously McKenna likes. And I think with those sort of teams in the Premier League, you can't have a Berbatov. You can't have a sort of flair uh, striker who won't do the hard running. And the, the, the thing that I've been told about and seen from Stansfield is that he will work his socks off, really try and dig in for the team. And that's probably what you'd want as a, a, a striker in Ipswich in the Premier League. So I'd love him to go to Ipswich. Hope that comes off um, hmm. and see the, the best out of Stansfield. And then he'll come back even more developed um, and a more complete player and, and start to sort of push for that number nine shirt for uh, Fulham sort of, come the the 26 27 season or wait 20 yeah um or 25 look, I, I, I tend to agree with you i mean if he comes back i just can't see him actually I, I, the mix doesn't feel right for him to come back as one of our strikers right now um and you know could he could he play on the wing for us i think we need a more experienced players i i don't i don't really want that um, I think we need more experienced, like next level players. I think we, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. Um, and if it, look, if Ipswich uh, wanted him, that I think that would be fantastic, be perfect, absolute dream signing for him. I would have thought, mm. uh, provided provided that he actually does, uh, you know, play his fair share of games. If he came in there and just yeah, you know, and they they suddenly they've now got promoted. They they spent some money, buy themselves a striker, and he's the second striker. That could be a pretty rubbish outcome for him. Yeah. Um, but obviously, what what you're envisaging is them buying into him being their key man. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, but um, yeah, uh, I I I in in my head. I think Raul will be very fortunate to actually still be around next season. I I, I can't see it. What do you think? No. Honestly, no. I think he he will 
probably go back um, to Mexico or sort of one of the Latin clubs. I think it, he's just like you say, he's not a first choice or anywhere sort of in the pecking order for me in a striker situation. Because for me, I think there's going to be the person who replaces Broya with, unless it is Broya, I don't know. Um, but um, at the moment he sits third choice for me. And I think you can't have a third choice on the money that we're talking here, especially when, you know, the money's tight and regulations are coming out left, right and center that, you know, we've got the UEFA regulations now, which is the, you can only spend X amount of your turnover. Then you've got, you know, this new one that's coming in, which is the anchoring. It's all really confusing. Hopefully we've got some financial whiz who's, who's fixing that for us, but I, it doesn't take a, a somebody with a, a finance deal or an economics degree to come in and say your third play, your third choice striker on a hundred K a week is wasting a space in the squad. So I think for me, he has oh. to, he has to go. Yeah. I, I actually, I actually did, did a little bit of work on this um, with my very limited knowledge of um, the, the whole squad cost proposed rules are all about but I did did a bit of digging and actually went through this. It's probably worth a chat some other mm. time. But um, I and, and and obviously there's lots of assumptions around this, um, and I, it's it's beyond my uh, my capability to understand exactly where the Mitrovic money actually lands. There seems to be so much debate about where that actually lands and whether it's in or out and whether we've had the benefit of that yet or not. But um, in, in looking at the way anchoring works, um, and I know this is not next season. It's it's the the year after. It's proposed, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it it probably is a fair chance of going through, uh, but I, I think it's an optimistic. Oh, it's actually quite a positive, potentially positive uh, situation for Fulham, uh, mm. less so that it actually pairs back, um, pairs back the teams that are you know the top four or top six very, very wealthy teams or teams that generate a lot of revenue. But from the way I saw it is that uh, I, I think it could actually give us an opportunity to spend some money if we, yeah, released, yeah. if we released a bunch of players that we think probably need to go anyway and sold mm -hmm. a bunch of players. Um, I think we, we'd end up having a lot of money. I don't want to start quoting some of my numbers, but uh, it might, it might be um, – might be worth having a chat about that at some point in the off season. I think. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, well, I think from the from the one last positive from the Brentford game, I would take is um, the activity we had on the Discord. I think it was really nice to have. I know there was certain elements of people who couldn't get tickets and um, and therefore had to find their own means of, of of watching the game, whatever that may be. But the engagement that we had of people discussing the game and giving their thoughts and and you know just general debates about you know how mm. we can improve and things like that it was really good to have the the activity on the discord and um so i want to thank everyone who who sort of came along and 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 sort of gave us their thoughts and and had a bit of a chat made it more into it made it more entertaining if i'm honest the, the chat was more entertaining than the game itself so um so thanks for everyone who came along to the discord but if you if you weren't in the discord why not get in Join us for the next game and uh, and join the community. It's all good fun. Yeah, I'm glad you reminded me because I, I should have actually mentioned that a little earlier on. But uh, yeah, it's been a lot of activity. I think we're um, we picked up a bunch of new new members and it's growing nicely. And uh, people seem to be uh, contributing in a really healthy way. And uh, um, as you said, we we had a cheeky live stream last last night, uh, which hopefully was. Uh, helpful to a lot of people who couldn't get tickets and uh, yeah it was a very very enjoyable chat um i want to say that perhaps the most impactful and dramatic thing that happened uh last night in the second half was um jack's daughter lola all 16 months of her unleashing a um 
a, a full stomach of vomit all over Jack and herself at the 80th minute. It was probably the most interesting than, thing that happened, actually. I think we and, all felt and, that and, way in the 80th minute. <laughs> well, I was going to say, she, all she was doing was echoing what everyone was thinking and feeling. <laughs> it, uh, it was quite impressive. Um, oh, boy. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, look, um, unless you have anything more that, that you can think we need to talk about and commiserate about, uh, Skippy, I think no, we probably wrap it think, up there. Yeah, so Man City next. I'm not looking forward to it. I don't know anyone who is, um, but obviously we'll do a preview before uh, nearer the time. But um, I saw them play yesterday. Um, I think it was Bournemouth, wasn't it? Absolutely blown away. Harlan got four goals. So what could go wrong? Um, but, well, no. but, but honestly, though, I, I'd rather... I'd rather us actually have a game at this point in the season now where there's nothing to lose. Um, I'd rather us actually face that kind of opponent because how could you possibly not turn up for a game when you're playing Man City? You just look like an idiot if you don't try because they will put 10 past you. Yeah. Pardon me. And so, you you, you know, I, I hope, pardon me, we, we try a few different things, as I said, give, give uh, Troy yeah. Eric a start. Um, just create some chaos. Um, I don't know. If that means bringing Jimenez on again <laughs> to, to start. Hopefully but... not. They're, they're, that would. I mean, that would be chaos in a completely different. That would be like a self-inflicted chaos. But um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but, you never know. I mean, yeah, I mean, they, yeah, could, think... they still got a title to play for, so they they're going to be more Absolutely. drilled than we will. But but and also leave. they'll they'll be they'll be kind of not wanting to be embarrassed either because they'd be falling at the last hurdle because mm-hmm. they should easily put Fulham away in Fulham's current form. They should just brush past us, right? In all fairness, yeah. notwithstanding the fact that we're at home. Uh, but I, I'm hoping that this Fulham team actually goes, right, we're playing for pride here. Let's see what we can do. Let's uh, have have some kind of impact on, on the end of the season here. And... Uh, try a few things different i know it's not marco's way but wouldn't mm. you love to see that happen yeah. yeah i mean it would make it more enjoyable but hey we'll, we'll we will we shall see yeah anyway let's let's leave it at that thanks very much for stepping up and uh and and joining me even though you left me there for a few anxious moments but <laughs> uh um yeah thanks thanks for stepping in when the others uh fell by the wayside with their little special projects today no, it's all right. It's all good. I mean, we managed to talk about it. It, well, it didn't feel healthy talking about it, but um, no. yeah, we 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 keep, we, we we keep got talking. About, we keep talking about this as as cathartic and and some sort of therapy session. But I really feel better. I have to say, I really feel better. Anyway, without further any further ado, thanks again, Skippy, for joining joining me. And uh, until no next time, uh, come on, you whites.